respect uh, the sacrifice you are making. Please continue to make this sacrifice and uh, uh, believe in that you are working for the country and all our people. President Muhammad Buhari promises to be more conscious of parties' interests as the All Progressives Congress strategizes for more developmental gains. Together we can make Nigeria better. Together we can make the next level better. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation releases execution and guide documents to ministers designate. Federal High Court in Lagos orders the freezing of three bank accounts linked to a former Lagos state official. On Good Morning Nigeria today, we shall take a look at the incidence of suicide on campuses. Now, the issue of uh, suicide has continued to be a disturbing phenomenon, especially now uh, that it has taken a, a new dimension. Uh, we now find uh, a suicide in, uh, on campuses uh, ac across the nation. That's certainly a very uh, worrisome trend. If you recall, Kirian, uh, we had discussed the uh, issue of suicide generally in, in the country. Uh, this was several weeks ago. Uh, but it would appear that uh, the uh, reports uh, keep uh, coming out of the campuses of students who are taking their own lives. And a number of reasons, of course, have been adduced for this. But uh, usually it will be there on account of a jittered uh, lover or you know, poor performance in, uh, in academics. But it's, it's a very worrisome development. Uh, yes, uh, and one wonders why uh, the reasons you have just uh, explained you know, could lead to one taking his or her own life. And it's not just in Nigeria. It is a global uh, phenomenon. And of course, uh, the uh, World Health Organization has also put a figure of about 800,000 people uh, dying uh, as a result of suicide globally. That's an evaluation uh, that was made in 2012. That's, that's correct, uh, uh, Kirian. And, uh, and of course, uh, there are further indications that uh, unless uh, there is a clawback, as it were, of the rate of suicide, uh, we might see uh, many more persons uh, take their own lives, uh, which of course is, is an unfortunate development, by the way. Oh, yeah, and that leads to so, so many questions uh, as to what happens in our, uh, happen, happen to our school curriculum. Is there no uh, calls, uh, but is there student education or in on campus education of uh, people uh, to reason properly because uh, depression cannot always come because of the vicissitudes of life That's which right. has always been there and must be there and to manage it becomes a problem that should be uh, a, a, a way uh, that, that each school should institutionalize a kind of uh, uh, courses that will tend to uh, you know guide students on how to reason you know because you know, when you go under depression the next thing is that you will become a loner. Uh, from there, you begin to think of, uh, you know, have a suicidal uh, thoughts. Well, well Kieran, uh, uh, some persons would say, obviously, that that was uh, a generation or, or more ago. Uh, in my time, and obviously in your time, uh, I would never heard of any uh, suicide Students, reports. Then. Yes, on a student taking his own life. If it happened, if it happened, then of course there will be a major chill on the campus. Uh, but uh, these days, as we said, uh, the incidents are uh, happening, you know, all, all around. And one must also wonder what is happening to uh, the social fabric in the first instance uh, of, uh, of of the campuses. You know, how are the students relating to one another? How are the authorities? You have a department of uh, student affairs and usually there will be a dean uh, who is in charge of that. So uh, is, could it be the explosion in the student population so that there is no direct interface, as it were, you know, between the officials and the students? And how are the, the, the students' unions themselves also responding uh, to all of this, just beyond the uh, Aluta phenomenon? Yeah, I mean, exactly. if your members, you know, are taking their lives uh, the way that that's been reported, then uh, what, what should the students' union also do? Uh, you, you've mentioned something very crucial here when you were, were brought in the social aspect of it. You see, everybody 
must not go to school. For those of them who took their lives because they couldn't pass their papers, yes. or perhaps uh, you can't afford to pay school fees, uh, you can take to another trade, you, know, you can take to something else. You know, Everybody sure. must not be a graduate. But because of the phenomenon, certificate phenomenon in Nigeria, if you are not a graduate, you, know, you don't get anything. Uh, yet we don't even have a, a system whereby we have a technical education you know, uh, that people could go into if you cannot uh, you know, meet up with the challenges of uh, becoming a graduate. Or university university, university graduate. graduate. Well, of yeah. course, uh, those are issues we shall be taking a look at today in our conversation segment on Good Morning Nigeria. So on that note, we'd like to welcome you to the program. Abuja is not wet this morning, but it's foggy and exactly. chilly. Exactly. My name is Kingsley Osadolo, and welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. And I'm Kirin Umayo. Um, thanking you for being there this morning. Uh, we're going to take our complimentary segments as usual, uh, newspaper review, business, sports, foreign, and entertainment. For now, we have the morning news, and uh, Abd Malik Adil is our guide. Hello, Abd Malik. Good morning, Kingsley and Kirin. Welcome. The governing All Progressives Congress continues to strategize for effective implementation of next level agenda towards achieving national prosperity. President Muhammadu Bahari has promised to be conscious of the party's interest as well as consensus in taking key decisions. This was while receiving members of the National Working Committee of the APC on a courtesy visit. This is the last lap for me. I have to be very, very party questions. I respect uh, the sacrifice you are making. Please continue to make this sacrifice and uh, uh, believe in that you are working for the country and all our people and that uh, no material benefit uh, will pay you adequately. And still on matters of governance, President Muhammad Bahari says he will work with relevant constitutional bodies towards resolving the crisis working the Yibauchi and Edo State Houses of Assembly. The president, who stated this when he received an audience, APC lawmakers from Bauchi State House of Assembly, as well as other stakeholders of the party, promised to ensure justice and fair play. It's all about Mohammed O. Ibrahim becoming a speaker, but all we are asking is that has to be done so that at least with prosperity will judge us as that have contributed to strengthening the institution. So we hope Mr. President will add his word on the resolution of the National Assembly on calling on the state government to do the right thing by issuing first proclamation a date and time where all of us 31 will go and conduct fresh elections. Whosoever the images, inshallah, we are going to take it in good faith. The president recognizes that you need to be reassured that with or without a governor of APC, that he appreciates the fact that you carry our flag and our broom in Bauchi State, and that the party is on ground in Bauchi State. I always like to be on the side of the constitution. I do not uh, want you as members representing your constituencies, the majority of constituencies in that state, to compromise your individual integrity and bind the party at the House. My advice is that the trust your constituencies put in you, you must uh, responsibly hold to it, stay firm. And the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has released document on the policies and programs of the Bahari administration to ministers designated in Abuja to guide them in the execution of the next level agenda. This means that this administration is going to start uh, on a very serious note, the ministers are expected to hit the ground running and every minister, our expectation is will have clear deliverables that will be expected of them. The office of the SGF, particularly the cabinet office, has given us so much hope that yes indeed, information dissemination will be very easy and from here we will now be able to also talk to Nigerians and then uh, things will flow. Now to judicial matters, the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has ordered the freezing of the three bank account with a sum of 9.9 .9 billion naira linked to a former Lagos state official. Justice Chuka Obioso gave the order 
following an expertise application filed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, which is investigating the alleged fraud. Similarly, the Kogi State House of Assembly has directed the Deputy Governor, Simon Achuba, to respond to allegations of financial impropriety levied against him or face outright impeachment. This followed a notice of impeachment served on the Deputy Governor in Lokoja. The Deputy Governor has not been in his office or performed any official duties since about May 2018. He has also not attended any official functions, including the state executive council meetings of the state. The Ado State Command of the Department of State Security Service has arrested two suspects alleged, allegedly involved in high-profile internet fraud in the name of Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo and the wife of the President Aisha Bahari. Based on the available intelligence on ground, and we're able to we're able to arrest these suspects, though at different times at, at different venues. And that is one operations we did that we want this to say to send a signal to those who want to perpetrate this heinous crime. And the Army headquarters and the force headquarters of the Nigerian police have agreed to constitute a joint investigation panel to be headed by the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of Criminal Investigation Department, DIG Mike Ugbezi, to jointly investigate and report on the circumstances surrounding the exchange of fire that led to the death and injuries to some police officers in Taraba State. A statement from the Acting Director, Army Public Relations, Cornel Sagir Musa, said the incident was a case of mistaken identity as the Army was responding to distress call. The statement noted that both the Army and the police are fighting against crime and other internet security threats confronting the nation, which the police is the lead agency. The statement looks forward to the report of the Joint Investigation Panel to find out the true position of the incident and how to forestall future reoccurrence. And that's the much we can take for the news. A break beckons. When we come back, Good Morning Nigeria continues. <laughs> There's a smarter way to live with Airtel Binge Plan, the ideal data plan for those heavy data moments. Get a 2 gigabyte daily binge plan for 500 Naira. Dial star 141 hash to activate. Live smarter with data. Airtel, the smartphone network. Here you go. Madam. That's it. Those Naira's are enough. Hi, dear. <laughs> Helen. You've got so much even after spending so little. Savings is such a necessity. You save everywhere. But here, you lose it all. How? With this? Impossible. New Tika Apic 10X. Even after applying up to one liter of your solution multiple times, you won't get the same cleaning that Apic gives you in a single round. And the expense? Far less compared to your one liter of solution. New Tika Apic. Tough and cleaning, tough and savings. <laughs> Protocol and event management are special skills which can only be acquired through training and experience. NTA TV College JOS is organizing a special two-week course on protocol, event management, and public relations to upgrade the capacities of practitioners. The course will equip participants with modern skills, techniques, and international best practices in protocol, event management, and public relations. Also, a special four-week intensive course on non-linear editing techniques will run concurrently. The course will expose participants to modern techniques and technologies of non-linear editing. Take advantage of this course to hone your professional skills for premium packaging of your programs and reports. The venue for both courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College, near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws, Plateau State. Date 19th to 30th August 2019 for the course on protocol, event management and public relations. 19th August to 13th September 2019 for basic non-linear editing techniques. Course fee. 100,000 Naira only per participant. Accommodation inclusive. For more information, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College JAWS. Training you to be the best you want to be.
stakeholders advocate a total commitment on the part of investors for real growth in the agri sector. Chimobi Water Naji now brings us uh, business news. Nigeria is set to lead the rest of the world in areas of monitoring and evaluation of the Sustainable Development Goals as the Ministry of Budget and National Planning led the country being the first in the Southern Hemisphere to conduct the evaluation. This was disclosed by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Mr. Ernest Umakie, during a two-day national workshop on the development of the National Monitoring and Evaluation Strategy held in Abuja. The meeting is aimed at underscoring the importance of developing a collective national strategy for the delivery of good monitoring and evaluation that will take cognizance of a common need of stakeholders at national, subnational levels as well as development partners. Meanwhile, the need for farmers to ensure strict adherence to production specifications, especially at the primary production levels, has been advocated. Experts say this will ensure agricultural products from Nigeria meet international standards and ready for export. I, uh, I keep saying that the value chain of agriculture has to be expanded so that people now see the different areas of agriculture that you can play in. So it doesn't have to now be, oh, because because you are in agriculture, you have to own a farm. Because you are in agriculture, you because now the only two sectors are is either you are in the primary production, you have a farm, you produce, or you are buying from the open market and processing, or you are you even the export is very few people that are looking at export and marketing. Nobody is looking at logistics. There is a huge market for logistics. Trading on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange experienced a slowdown Wednesday after starting the week on a positive note to close the day at minus 0.42%. Here is a graphic representation of trading figures on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. <laughs> With business news, I'm Chimobi Walter Naji. Thank you very much, Chimobi Walter Naji, for the business package. Next for us on the program is New Super Review. is here with us uh, as usual for Mr. Parivy. Bye, good morning. Thank you, Kenyan. Good morning. Good morning, Kassi. Good morning, Nigeria. All right, Bayer, good to see you. Thank you. Uh, All right, sure. uh, let's begin with the leadership newspaper. Leadership, below the nameplate of the leadership newspaper. Um, India increases crude oil demand from Nigeria. Uh, it's on page uh, five. And then uh, the lead story, debtors accounts under surveillance as a PMB signs new Amcon Act is on page four. With the writer, EFCC vows to recover five trillion naira debts. All right, just uh, on the left hand side of the uh, photo story here, President waits into Bauchi Edo Assembly's crisis, uh, promises to uphold party supremacy. Uh, details uh, on page four. And then uh, uh, the foot of uh, the newspaper, we have Wike sends Rivers lecturers names to DSS over cultism. It's on page 11. Uh, Kaduna government seeks strict monitoring of Ezazaki on bail. On page 11. And then Nigeria Hydrological Agency warns of more flooding. Uh, the story can be found on page 18. And now Kogi Assembly moves to impeach Deputy Governor. And that's on page 14. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the Nigerian pilot. Uh, the Nigerian pilot has as its lead story the story out of uh, Kogi State. Nigerian pilot. Kogi, Deputy Governor Togo, 
That's the headline. Uh, and you have a number of uh, riders that faces impeachment for alleging financial misappropriation and poor performance against the governor. Faces impeachment for alleging financial misappropriation and poor performance against the governor. Accused of inciting crisis in Ibaji local government area. Lawmakers say action is gross misconduct and gives deputy governor two weeks to respond. And group describes lawmakers as bellows stooge and acting undemocratically and tasks them to investigate Achuba's allegations. Details of the story can be found on page 8. Now, immediately below the nameplate, uh, Ami uh, kills three cops and one civilian and frees notorious kidnapper. Uh, that's according to the police. Details of that story can be found on page 5. Slain Catholic priest. Khan demands sack of security chiefs. That's on page 12 in greater detail. And then right uh, below the photograph there on the front page of the Nigerian pilot, you have uh, a number of headlines. Revolution now, Shaware and DSS battle in court today. That's page 5. Busola Dakolo says rape case against Koza Pastor continues. Again, court stops National Assembly from taking over Edo Assembly. That's on page 9. I'll be a better party mouth this time, President Buhari, page 8. And stop interfering with legislative functions. Reps want judiciary, page 6. And Buhari to intervene in Edo and Bochi assembly crisis, assures of justice and fair play. Give waivers to reduce cost of building materials, very government urged. Bio. Yes. Uh, let's start with the story about uh, the flood alert. Uh, the National Hydrological Services has warned that we are in an era where there is persistent rainfall across the nation is likely to lead to flood. And all the 36 states of the Federation are going to have various levels of rainfall. However, 15 states have been placed on lead, red alert for flood. And they include Kebi, Niger, FCT, Nasarawa, Igawa, Bauchi, Adamawa, Oyo, Lagos, Imo, Abia, Cross River, Rivers, Edo, and Delta State. And these states, particularly, if you look at them, they are lying in the flood plains of River Niger and Benue. And so the alarm bell has been rang now, and the state emergency services, national emergency services, and the state government must all be alert so that they are not taken uh, by surprise. 21 members of the 25 legislators in Gogi State our Assembly have signed a petition of gross misconduct against Deputy Governor Simon Lachupa. The majority leader of the House told the House that at plenary that the actions or an utterances of Deputy Governor Achuba in recent times amounted to acts of gross misconduct and must be investigated. Having cited Section 188 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, the House resolved that the petition should be served on the Deputy Governor and he should respond within 14 days. Um, meanwhile, a running story. We remember yesterday Abu Bakr Tafawa Baliwa University where some students died. The Vice Chancellor has clarified that three students died and he said no student is missing. He was briefing the Governor of Bauchi State Bala Mohammed, when he visited on Condoleezza visits, and he explained that the metal bridge was constructed by the management for 10 to 15 people at a time. The bridge is not a static bridge. It is meant for pedestrians to pass. However, after the rain has stopped around 11.45, students going to the hostel saw a beautiful scenery, and they stopped on the bridge to have selfies. So you have one student, two, three, ten, and before you knew it, over 30 students have gathered on the bridge. And the bridge mm, came away. You can imagine a, a bridge built of metal certainly will suffer corrosion and eventually mm. rust and cannot continue to stand. And so that is the, the consequence of it. For mean, mean, Meanwhile, uh, the vice chancellor has confirmed that sadly only three students were three students were lost. Not seven as was initially speculated mm. and later on reduced to five. It's now only five. But meanwhile, the university has closed as a mark of respect for the students. Well, the, uh, the issue of the bridge, it was something that you, you recall we discussed uh, yesterday when we had the newspaper review. A, a bridge is not ordinarily designed to bear dead weight. 
In other words, static weight. weight yes. uh, so whether of human beings or vehicles, which is why when you see uh, vehicles parked on top of bridges, uh, engineers will warn you that uh, before you know it, you know the uh, the bridge, the integrity of the bridge will be compromised. Mm. Uh, it's pretty unfortunate that that particular incident happened. Apparently, it was what you might technically refer to as a flimsy bridge. I mean, it wasn't a rugged, uh, sturdy no. bridge that uh, would uh, take the amount of weight that it bore at the at material the time, point in time. Uh, that, that it gave way. And again, with the <coughs> rain, you know, uh, uh, something must have uh, happened beneath, you know, the, um, the bridge itself in terms of uh, the way it was structured. Mm -hmm. And uh, the integrity aspect that Kinsley brought in there is, is, is quite apt, you know, because uh, if it's not properly constructed, uh, then uh, what uh, the consequence uh, was obvious, uh, was what happened there last time. The important thing to, make, to mention here is that for you to put such a bridge within school premises, knowing full well that uh, students, you know, <laughs> students three converged on it as against what should be, then if you have to do a bridge, they do it, uh, let, let, let it be strong. Yes, it, it should be, be a, strong, concrete bridge. a concrete bridge. We have also warned on Good Morning Nigeria several times that even trailers that pack on flyovers and bridges, mm. it's a danger because it's not meant for static weight. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's right. Then the other issue, of course, Bio has uh, already referenced that, the uh, move by the Kogi State House of Assembly to impeach the Deputy Governor. Of course, the background to that is that the Deputy Governor has been crying out lately that his allowances running into uh, over 800 million naira, so allowances have not been paid by the Governor at some point. He was in Abuja to see President Muhammadu Buhari, and now the next thing is uh, the move to uh, impeach him. From one of the uh, members of the <coughs> House of Assembly read, uh, if I got him right, was that he's not been attending official functions since May this year. He doesn't attend uh, uh, weekly meetings of the uh, executive. He does not uh, appear at any of official functions and, and, and all of that. I think the straw that broke the camel's back was an interview he granted on a, a national television network making very serious allegations about his principal. And that was cited as part of... Uh, yeah. Of the, of <coughs> but the, the thing is, uh, from what we have seen with regard to uh, impeachment jurisprudence since yes. 1999, uh, yes, you have the provision there in the Constitution that in carrying out uh, its, uh, its function or exercising its powers of impeachment, the... Uh, National Assembly or the State House of Assembly uh, shall not be under the control of any other arm of government. But we have seen judicial intervention. Sonia Oyebuchi of Enugu, mm -hmm. uh, who was uh, deputy to uh, Sullivan Chime, was impeached. So one of the reasons given was that he was running a poultry. A poultry farm. At, in uh, yes, yeah, at, at government house <laughs> in Enugu. <laughs> exactly. And he went, he went to court challenged his impeachment, and, he, and he, won. he won. So they can continue with this process, and if the deputy governor, if he survives it or doesn't survive it, you know, he will still have his day in court. Uh, of, of course. Now, let's return to uh, uh, newspapers now, uh, Daily Sun newspaper. On the right-hand side of uh, the nameplate, to have a Northern Coalition demands review of political alliance with Southwest is on page 39. <coughs> now, flooding, worst days ahead, uh, NIHSA uh, warns, that's uh, the Nigeria Hydrological uh, Service Agency warns. Uh, details of that is on page uh, 9. It has a right at it. It says, Emo, Kogi, Lagos, FCT, two of others under threat. Now, Edo Bauchi assemblies, I will ensure justice and fair play, says Buhari. Court halts National Assembly plan to take over Edo Assembly. It's also on page 39. Air Rufai gives conditions for Ezra Zaki's medical trip abroad. You can capture that on page 11. Now, Buhari, South African president to meet over xenophobic attacks. Uh, on page 40, that's where you get that. And then, Kugi Assembly, as we have just discussed, moves to impeach deputy governor. Well, the story of Floyd Bayer is definitely uh, front loaded that in this uh, review of the stories that we have on the front pages. It's also the lead for the Daily Trust newspaper. It says, Flood, federal government places uh, FCT 15 states on red alert and rains to persist in Abuja and other cities, together with the illustration. And we should also say that this story is being attributed to the Director General of the Hydrological Services Agency. Yes. That's the engineer Clement Unze, who was. Our guest on Good Morning Nigeria yeah, yesterday, right. yes, okay. uh, along with uh, the DG Nema, 
um, and the, the deputy director of the Federal Capital Territory Emergency Management Agency and the former controller general of uh, the Federal Fire uh, Service. Uh, the, the points that is just reported now are uh, the same issues that Engineer Unze highlighted mm -hmm. uh, with regard to what's coming out. That what we are seeing in terms of flooding now uh, is arising from uh, what we call urban flooding as a result of poor planning and poor management of the environment. But that the river flooding is coming uh, from River Niger and also from uh, River Benway, plus, of course, uh, the coastal flooding that might also result. The critical question is how will the emergency management agencies in the states respond to this warning coming from the Hydrological Services Agency? Yes, that's the challenge. Uh, state uh, emergency management services agencies should be red alert now. They shouldn't wait until when it comes before they start. Those who are already uh, inhabiting the lower plains must be advised to evacuate and move out of the place. We, you know, we have discussed this several times, and uh, it, it does seem that uh, there's no uh, synergy between the national uh, NEMA and, uh, and the state NEMA, because if there is, all the warnings from April, nobody has heeded to the warning until this point, at this point when the rains already, have really yeah. come, and, you know, we're already in the, in, in, the, in the heat of it. So, uh, can you imagine that the man that lost his life, you know, just last week, could not be rescued. Yet it was a, a city, a city flood, right? And whatever the reasons that, that led to the flood, you know, we have had flood in other cities across the globe, even those that have the the, the, the finest, uh, you know, drainage system, you know, the, uh, the cities were flooded. So it's not new if it happens here. But the point is, how prepared is NEMA, both state and national? If there's no synergy, then I'm afraid that uh, we'll continue to have all these uh, devastating, uh, you, know, you know, flood across the nation. Two running story. Uh, Kaduna State Government has given seven terms of conditions for which uh, the, the, uh, the Ibrahim Ezdak Zaki and his wife must fulfill for their medical leave. Uh, they include uh, the situation that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is to confirm the appointment at the Indian Hospital and undertake diplomatic arrangements and protocol for compliance with the conditions of the uh, medical leave. Secondly, the sheikh and his wife shall undertake to return after they are discharged from the hospital. Um, in, in consonance with that, they are to produce two prominent uh, persons, one a, a first-class chief, and second, a prominent person in Kaduna City who will stand as shorties for them, and they must have landed property. Uh, the conditions are uh, seven of them. Uh, one of them, also very interesting, is that security agents of the federal government shall escort and remain with them and shall return <coughs> with them upon this charge. And the Nigeria High Commission in India shall vet and grant consent before they will be visited. Also, the expenses for the travel cost should be borne by them, but, by, but not by Kaduna State Government. The other running story is, remember, Reverend Father Paul Ofu, who was uh, murdered on the highway. 25 minutes after he was murdered, he said that his account was withdrawn to the last penny. And the question that has been has raised is that uh, how did they know the PIN number to his ATM so much so that they withdrew a lot of money there? The second observation is that there is a possible indication that there is an insider to have provided the PIN number for the Reverend Father's account. It may be recalled that Reverend Father Paul Ofu was dragged out of his car and murdered on a highway along uh, Abudu Road. Uh, a commercial driver who actually cited it for fear was kidnapped and they also later on found his dead body in the bush. So the, the, the murderers were trying to cover up their tracks. So, but however, Amaraizu Ebere, the spokesperson for Enugu uh, Police Command, has uh, declared that the police has vowed to fish out those who are involved uh, in it. Something happened here from, from, from the, I read this yesterday too on, on social media, but I was not sure, you know, until you know, uh, Bio just read it out. And uh, uh, if someone's account uh, it was emptied within 25 minutes, should that be ATM? Can you use ATM to withdraw more than uh, 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 up to a million or something? Of course, I don't know how much or, it has or, in that account. Maybe they transferred. They made a transfer. Well, the report is saying that uh, frantic and persistent withdrawals left 
the account Can't empty. empty. And the, the, the money must have moved somewhere. It could be tracked. Absolutely. Yes, could be tracked. Absolutely. The, the other yes. human interest story is a 10-year-old girl has deli been delivered of a baby girl in Macaulay. 10-year-old ten girl. Uh, she was dumped at the general hospital and a good Samaritan uh, took her and to a private hospital where they perform cesarean section on her and she you now have a baby mother and a baby girl. Uh, by history, the youngest girl to have delivered of a baby was a five-year-old Peruvian girl. It happened in 1939 and she was said to have reached poverty at the age of three and delivered at five. Well, uh, the case of the of the ten year old is uh, something for the police authorities uh, yes. to track because that's obviously uh, a victim of rape. Exactly. Okay. Uh, let's take out the editorial we are reviewing this one. It's from the New Telegraph, uh, raising capital base of insurance firms. Now, the editorial in part states that a view of the poor state of the sector that they, the paper aligns with the regulator to ensure that no amount of blackmail should again compel it to alter the new capital-based program in whatever form. Mm. Before I go to that, I'll quickly draw attention to this other interesting story. A woman went to a car shop to buy a car in Germany, and she ended up in handcuffs. Why? She presented counterfeit currency in euro to buy a car at about 35,000 euro. The police went to her house, and they found a printer where she was printing the currency. <laughs> Uh, when for when I was started, that's the one they used to call wash wash. Wash also. wash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wash money for you. <laughs> well, the editorial is on the raising the capital base for insurance. Uh, it may be recalled that the National Insurance Commission had raised the capital base, which originally uh, was raised to 150 million, 200 million, 300 million, and recently raised it again to 2 billion, 3 billion, and 5 billion. And the editorial is saying that it is justifiable because of the level of premium and liability that has accrued. And by so raising the capital, the insurance will be in best position to cover the risk for their clients. Okay, Bayer, thank you very much for being around. Uh, we we'll hope to see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. It's Good Morning Nigeria, still on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We're taking a short break now. When we return, we shall be taking a look at our campuses and the incidents of suicide. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready, in the sky above, and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. Preparing for that big day can be somewhat stressful. which can lead to headaches and pain. So treat headaches and pain fast with Nurofen Express. Nurofen Express liquid capsules, when taken, starts to dissolve in one minute, then goes to the source of pain fast, providing quick and effective relief. Nurofen Express works at the source of pain fast. You are watching NTA, Nigerian Television Authority. For more information and news updates, visit our website at www.nta.ng or you can follow us on Twitter at NTA News Now or you can like us on Facebook at NTA Network News. Stay connected on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash NTA News Online. Watch our live stream at www.nta.ng slash live. NTA, 
You can't beat the rich. If you're just uh, joining us, you are on Good Morning Nigeria, and we thank you for staying with us up to this moment. Our, our topic for today, as uh, earlier I mentioned, is uh, the incidence of uh, suicide on the Nigerian campuses. And uh, for us to, of course, uh, do a background uh, for that topic, let's uh, bring in Kunle Adeye. <laughs> In the past, taking one's life was considered a taboo in almost all communities in Nigeria. Recently, suicide is however becoming rampant as some see it as an antidote to depression or solution to their personal challenges. The rate at which Nigerians, especially youths, now take their own lives has become so alarming that the news of suicide is becoming regular. World Health Organization records indicate that the number of those who commit suicide is about 800,000 globally, which translates to one person every 40 seconds. The trend seems to be more on Nigerian campuses where students now resort to taking their own lives when they discover their academic records are below average. University of Nigeria Nsuka is the worst hit with not less than three students, including a 400-level student of the Department of English and Literary Studies, reportedly committing suicide in 2019. While the country ponders about this disturbing trend, a final-year student of the Department of English Language at the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Ocean State, killed himself over same reasons many believe to have been responsible for the action of students who committed suicide. Different reasons have been advanced for the growing interest of suicide among Nigerian youths. Top is the social media, which has led to infiltration of foreign culture. Whatever the reasons, Nigerians are increasingly becoming worried about the suicide rate and are seeking a quick reversal of the trend. But the questions remain, what has gone wrong with the mentality of the Nigerian students? What needs to be done to curtail this ugly trend? Guests on Good Morning Nigeria will give more insight shortly. And joining us in the studio to discuss the topic is uh, Professor Benson Osadala, former Dean, Student Affairs, University of Benin. Uh, Prof, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. And uh, also with us is uh, Dr. Lo Mefo, is a forensic uh, 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 social psychologist. So we're glad to have you to on the show. Thank you, Kiria. Yeah. All right. And uh, joining us from our Ibadan Network Center, we would like to uh, welcome Professor Adekeye Abiona. He is Dean of Students at the University of Ibadan. And we have two of them there. Uh, Professor Abiona, pleasure to have you with us on Good Morning Nigeria. Along, of course, with uh, Dr. Jibril Abdul Malik, who is a consultant psychiatrist at the University College Hospital, also in Ibadan. He is the convener of ACIDO Foundation. Uh, gentlemen, uh, Dr. Jibril Abdul Malik and uh, Professor Adekaya Abiona, uh, it's our pleasure to have you with us on Good Morning Nigeria today. Okay, Kiria, yes. let's begin the conversation yes. with uh, Dr. Law before, of course, uh, who is uh, a forensic and, and, and social psychologist. Yeah, that's we, right. we had taken on the subject matter of suicide uh, as a society-wide phenomenon yeah. uh, some weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as it were, we're now having, uh, if you like, a particularization of incidents of suicide on, on campuses. Uh, and some persons believe that this is uh, a new and worrisome trend. From our background report, uh, you heard what uh, our correspondent was uh, ticking off, as well as happened at the um, University of Nigeria and Suka, University of Benin, University of Abafemi Awalawa, University in Leife. From your perspective, what is happening on the campuses? Oh, well, I think. Um It will be relatively difficult to, you know, put a finger directly, you know, to what we may call the causative uh, factors. And, um, but there are some developments, some trends, 
you know, that have established a kind of trajectory that can help us to reconstruct and make a meaning out of the new environment that we, that, you know, that we have now as the universities in the country. The Nigerian university system has drastically changed in the last, you know, one to two decades. One is, a, is population explosion. One is a, uh, what you may call the death of uh, facilities. You know, a, a classroom that is constructed to take care of 100 students. Now, you know, are compared to take care of 300. Some students don't even get to sit inside the classroom itself. They listen to the lectures from outside. You know, and uh, if you go to the hostels, the story is essentially the same. What this tells you is that, you know, the, it, the, the university um, uh, education in the country has exploded, you know, in an uncontrolled manner to the point that the students are essentially on their own. And um, uh, the dean of, uh, I'm, I'm happy you brought uh, um, a dean, and uh, you, there is also a former dean here, and they can attest that, you know, they can no longer keep tab with uh, the individual students. And uh, if you take it down to the departments, the story is essentially the same. What that means is that the lecturers themselves who ought to go beyond lecturing to become mentors onto these students don't get to do so. In fact, one-on-one -on -one contact the student you know, could have with a lecturer can get as you know, further as uh, uh, final year when you have to write your projects. That is when you now have supervisors. Before then, you hardly can have anybody really talking to you one-on-one. -on -one. That is fundamentally a problem. And you look at the age of uh, the students who enter you know, the universities now. The age is reducing. The best uh, student in the jump of this year is 15. And he has got to scholarships here and there. And um, he, he is not alone. If you get into the university system, you see children, 15, 16, you know, probably 14, and, you know, they are children, whether we like it or not, their academic brilliance notwithstanding. So when you check the uh, trend, you will see that many more of these are now dumped on the campuses, and they are left at the mercy of what you call peers. You know, they are, they are, they are, their parents are not there. They have to take care of themselves. So they form cliques. They cliques. Some of the cliques are, are even dangerous. Some are cults. But let's leave that one aside. The point I'm trying to make is that the university system you know, has grown more negatively in the recent past. And what you have today, whether we are living in denial or not, the fact remains irrefutably so that the student, the average student on campus is isolated. And if you look at the, uh, um, the factors that precipitate suicide, of course, we all know that uh, suicide is uh, taking one's life. That's the simple definition. Mm -hmm. you know, but you know, <clears throat> taking your life just doesn't happen overnight. There is an adage in, in, in Igbo land that says that the thoughts a man entertains and takes his life is not a thought that was entertained in one night. It takes time, and that is the truth. What that means is that you know, from what you call suicide ideation that sets in between that time and the actual completion of suicide cycle, mm -hmm. when the individual takes his life, there is an intervening period. Yeah. And nothing is done within that intervening period. Mm -hmm. If nothing is done, the person will complete the cycle. And uh, we'll, we'll return to that uh, intervening period, you know, in the course of this conversation, because okay. that is the crux of the matter, you know, because the ideation comes yeah. but within a space of time, you know, before the person concludes to do it. Thank you very much indeed. And now, uh, let's bring in uh, uh, Professor Osadalo. Professor Osadalo, you, you, you were a dean uh, of Student Affairs, University of Benin. So That's I right. take it that uh, you were uh, closer uh, to students uh, than any any other dean, uh, being a dean of student affairs. Now, what kind of uh, vicissitudes a student might experience, you know, on campus uh, that could lead to uh, su suicide ideation or thoughts? Well, uh, as dean of students, normally, whether university opinion or elsewhere, the dean of students is the chief advisor to our students, particularly the. And so. 
to manage their problems. I, as dean of students, I noticed that student quality level. Bad on where bringing in a milieu, a social. They have such a uh, tendency. The students not have of uh, society and a very good. Rap Challenges to assist. I'm sure that uh, this can be minimized. And I said earlier, it's more or less a social problem. And I should add that this social media is also contributing to it. Students have access to social media, they know what is happening there. The student that I mentioned the other time, uh, the one that happened on Saturday, is, uh, was said I led to after taking sniper. I wouldn't know, if not because social media. So we have a problem. It's really a social problem. And that is why we need to address it globally. And uh, there should be good orientation from time to time, um, lectures, um, workshop, uh, workshop for students, so that they can have uh, you know a sort of uh, information available to them from time to time. That if you have problem, if you are depressed, if you are emotionally uh, uh, disabled or not stabilized, then you have challenges that you can reach. Probably your also president, probably at the departments. Even your peer group should be good enough. Let me say this. There was a time I uh, discovered some uh, awardings that I said, if they notice that any student is reporting their house of residence, having what's called moody situation, that is showing signs of uh, emotional instability, this should be reported immediately. And uh, when that such a case is reported, we refer them to, uh, we, report, start, we, report, uh, we refer such a case so uh, air services, we have social workers there, train social workers. I understand from time to time, these social workers also upgrade their knowledge in order to take care of students. These are the problems you have all over the country, but as much as possible, we are trying our best to manage it in our campus and the University of Baden. Thank you very much indeed for raising very uh, pertinent issues you know, in, your, in, in your comment. You said it, well, it's a societal, more societal than it is institutional, and you, you, was, you gave us a clue uh, of that. And now let's go to Dr. Abdul Malik, who is a consultant a psychiatric, a psychiatrist at University College uh, Hospital. Now, can you give us an idea of uh, any psychiatric influences that could metamorphose into suicide. Let's get a synopsis of such influences, you know, if any, um, as you may have witnessed in the course of uh, carrying out your, your job. Right, thank you very much for having me on the show. Right, thank and, you uh, very much for having me on the show. And, uh, I would just like to say that we need to put this in context. And that means that what we are experiencing is actually a global phenomenon. In that regard, as uh, mentioned in the preview to these discussions where the WHO figures were quoted, that one suicide death occurs every 40 seconds, nearly a million suicides every year. I want to reiterate very quickly before I go on to answer the specific question of what mental health problems may predispose to this issue. To mention very quickly that suicide is particularly very high across the young population globally. Between the ages 15 to 24, suicide is the second leading cause of death in that age group. Second student in the UK dies from suicide every four days. So every four days, one university student in the United Kingdom dies from suicide. Now, this is a big problem. And in Nigeria, we are just beginning to see this. I am not so convinced that this has not always been there. I believe that social media has actually brought it to the fore. And that's why we are seeing more of this. Now, specifically to the question of the mental health problem, we know that nearly between 80 to 90% of suicide deaths will have implicated 
a mental health condition, and the commonest is depression. Depression is a mood disorder where the person feels extremely sad. This is beyond everyday sadness. The person feels extremely very sad for a very long duration, and it interferes with their day-to-day -day functioning. Other features of depression that commonly leads to thinking about committing suicide is having low self-esteem, feelings of worthlessness, no longer having any hope in the future. As the forensic uh, psychologist had mentioned, they don't see anything worth living for. And everything in life looks very bleak. And so they begin to ask themselves also because at that time they experience a lot of emotional pain. That's another misconception that I want our, our viewers at home to please pay attention to. That when individuals begin to talk about suicide, it's because they are experiencing such intense emotional pain and anguish. They are suffering. But you know, we are more used to physical pain than concepts of emotional and psychological pain. But psychological and emotional pain can be so severe and disabling that it causes the individual to just want an escape route. That let me just sleep and not wake up again and not have to continue to deal with this problem. And this is why depression is the commonest mental health problem that is associated with suicide. Other factors, just to mention very quickly, include substance abuse, includes uh, personality disorders, people who are very impulsive, and then sometimes people with um, psychosis. These are um, mental health problems that are usually associated with suicide, but depression every year. And we know if somebody begins to talk about you know, death, right, revenge, expressing worthlessness. Do you understand that? What is this life all about? Is it not even better to end it up? It's a red flag. You know, once you begin to see such red flags, it is time to really begin to ask questions. See, rather than allow the individual to complete the cycle, when uh, that bizarre society side ideation sets in, it's better to err on the side of caution. What you do in a situation like that is to really sit the individual down and talk it over, right? It's not a motivational stunt that we have ups and downs in life. We all have our downs. We all have our problems. Even Dan Gote will tell you he still has problems. Do you understand that? So if everybody has problems, some in fake news is dangerous whether you do it for fun or for political gains real people can get hurt fake news don't create it don't spread it this is a public service announcement from nta Right, welcome back and it's still Good Morning Nigeria live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We have a torrent of tweets and we're going to go through them uh, very quickly. Kirian, Amabola um, Babs has this tweet. Now, suggested solutions, according to him, one, parents, whether together or separated, must take more interest in the personal affairs of their children. So sad that some children see their peers more approachable than their parents. Two, relevant stakeholders, that's to say government and schools, must take appropriate steps to address the menace of suicide on our campuses. All right, uh, Sunny Michael or Michael G. One of the reasons why suicide is on the rise in Nigerian campuses is uh, frustration. Some students, having done their best to pass, are sometimes uh, frustrated by some wicked lecturers uh, for one reason or the other. Sometimes it could be uh, the refusal of the students to compromise. Now, uh, Comrade uh, Ungala, the only solution to suicide on Nigerian campuses is to create awareness and provide adequate security. All right, from Francis Obi, the guidance and counseling officers in the universities uh, should do more work. Many of these students were raised by nannies and uh, televisions. Parents should spend time with their children. Now, Unsima Splendid tweets. Now, causes of
of suicide range from academic to social and psychological issues. The solution lies in us trying to cut our coat according to our cloth. Nothing is worth dying for. We just have to know that successful people tried many times before they succeeded. All right, uh, Ogo or OGO, I think the orientation given to students is not enough. If a course is tedious for a student, let the person apply for change of course and seek advice when necessary. Now, Gidado uh, Lawa tweets, as a psychologist, I feel that many students are in a state of depression. Academic pressure on the one hand and societal demand uh, could lead to anxiety. Now, Zozo Dean Clisius, I hope I got that right. I, said, I have a problem with the dean saying that the students don't come to seek advice or rely on the dean of student affairs and course advisors. How we there rely and seek advice when the deans are always unavailable and when they are available, they don't offer solutions. Now, uh, Arisha Monday uh, tweets. Uh, Arisha Monday tweets. Now, in solving suicide problems in, in Nigeria, the family, religious bodies have to be actively involved. Schools and civil society groups should constantly organize uh, symposia to sensitize our youth on the sanctity of life. All right, uh, Dan Ladi and Daebo, public enlightenment programs on the dangers of suicide through agencies like the NOA will go a long way in curbing the menace. Now, Stevens uh, tweets, it says, just as the Ibadan prof said, parents feel that what was ap applicable during their days is still in vogue now and expect students to solve their issues their own way. Uh, okay, Mute Brohim. Uh, good morning, Nigeria. Thanks for educating the public uh, in our present-day Nigeria. Suicide uh, on campus can be minimized uh, through some educational scheme that can guarantee free uh, financial access. Also, our educational system should be knowledge-driven. Uh, one of the one of the uh, persons that uh, sent a uh, message through to it, uh, they mentioned the fact that some deans may never be available when you need them. I, I, I had that thought earlier on. I wanted to, uh, you know, ask the deans to explain further because I know that every possibility that uh, not all the time that you, you wanted to see a dean... That, that that's right. Uh, Kira, that's a very pertinent mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. that the uh, Twitter raised and which you, you would like to pursue. Mm -hmm. I, I would like, you know, beginning with our uh, guest here in the Abuja yeah. studios, it is one thing to say that you have the structures Mm -hmm. of Dean of Student Affairs, officers who are working in the Dean's office. You have your course advisor, you have your academic advisor, some of whom reduce this to no more just sign in your academic forms as they used to do it in, in those days. How effective are these structures? Yeah. Well, let me say for University of Benin and for other universities, the structures are very, very effective. In the first instance, uh, the Student Affairs Division, where you have officers, including the deputy registrar, student affairs, or they call the student affairs officer. There are different categories of officers responsible for students' needs and problems. There are officers that have been assigned specific responsibilities to attend to students' problems. And so it is not all the time the students rush to see the dean of students. When they have problems, they are directed to specific officers to attend to those problems. There are officers that have schedules to deal with them on, on matters that relate to their problems. However, in the House of Residents, we also have the whole management structure that deals with problems of students at the hostel level. But in the faculty, we also have the dean of faculty, heads of department, course advisors, that are the lecturers that the students uh, interact with. These are structures on ground to assist students. But here, I think the problem I have observed of recent is that uh, the university is no more academically stimulating for students. It's no more socially interesting for students because of overpopulation. A room that is made for four students, you now have eight students. These, these are not just A students in one room just to live there and then go to attend to other matters in the university. They cook in their rooms. They cook in their rooms. They eat in their rooms. They live in their rooms. They do a sort of things in their rooms. And so they, they, they find, they, you know, 
that environment, you know, with great tension. And so when they live there, I mean, it's how soon do I get out of this place? How soon do I leave this university? What do I do next? So for many students, they are in a hurry. However, government also realizes that these problems are there. And that is why they also introduce the needs assessment. What are the needs of universities? As it relates to teaching and learning. But structures cannot be built overnight. It takes a lot of time to put in structures to accommodate students, maybe 5,000, 10,000. It takes a lot of time. But we are beginning to address these problems. But government still has to do more than you know, uh, anticipated. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll go to Ibado, to uh, Professor Abiona, who is also uh, a, a dean. Let's have your own uh, uh, input on uh, the effectiveness of the existing structures on campus that are designed uh, to provide uh, uh, solutions to uh, frustrating problems of uh, students. Uh, you have given us a clue of, of, of what happens in the University of Ibadan. Uh, expand it, you know, to uh, accommodate all other universities in Ni Nigeria. It does appear that uh, some of those structures are dysfunctional to a large extent. I believe that uh, the structure on ground should be good enough. As said by the former dean, in the faculties you have the uh, structure there, the dean, the HODs, the, le uh, the lecturers, and so on and so forth. Even those of residents, the word in there, or the word in Strada, they understand student affairs. And I said initially when we uh, have this uh, program, I said the phone of the dean of students should be available 24 hours. There have been instances whereby students will call you even for personal uh, problems, not only um, academics. And that's how it should be. There should be a way of communication even to the highest level, the vice chancellor, the DVCs, and so on and so forth. If students know that there are people on ground to listen to their complaints, then the issue of uh, suicide uh, will not uh, crop up again. And that's the most important thing. Uh, uh, I want to refer to University of Ibadan again. We even have a directory for uh, counseling. We are open all the time for students. Whenever they have problems, if they can't even go to uh, uh, affairs um, for, you know, with their problems. But the issue is that as the dean of students, you should be available 24 hours. Apart from dean of students, you have deputy dean of students. So the office is always open, uh, closing at any uh, normal time. But your phone should be on all the time to accommodate any problems at, uh, at any time. Even at midnight, you might be called uh, that the student has a problem and so on and so forth. If they know that you're available, if they know that you're open, you can listen to them, you can advise them, you can take up their problems, it will be extent that even going to the fac faculties or departments to solve their problems, then there are instances, I want to say, this, there are instances whereby we have to inv uh, in uh, invite parents to, to the campus to discover them uh, on the issue concerning their, their wars. This is how students can appreciate that the, uh, the, the university management is there to solve their problems. But if there's no one to take care of their problems, then when you have a, a, a gap in communication, if there's no one to listen to them, then such an uh, uh, issue as a suicide can, uh, can crop up at any time. So I believe that the structure is there on the ground. It might be difficult probably sometimes students might not have a uh, a good knowledge about, uh, you know, what operates in their own institution. But when you have orientation, you have workshop, you have, uh, you know, ways of reaching students, and students have ways of reaching you, then we have uh, peace on the campus. And that's where I see it. Uh, Professor Abiona, I, I'd like to stay with you. I actually have uh, a number of other points to raise, but we're getting pressed now uh, for time. The first one, very quickly, is, uh, is there a sense in which the university authorities feel some territorial limitation in uh, having to reach out to students who are not housed on, on campus to the extent now that you have private providers of accommodation. So whatever happens to them outside the territory or the confines of the university is their business. It could that also be a factor, considering what is also playing now, that sometimes some of those dangerous incidents that we get to hear on campuses, uh, get to hear from our universities, happen, uh, on the, happen on the accommodations that are usually provided 
off campus. That's one. Second point, uh, in terms of what needs to be done, how can the universities uh, also reach out to these uh, persons who are off campus, knowing that at some point, of course, they are crisscrossing the campus and getting in and out of the territory in, in, in trying to deal with uh, the social issues that might, that might arise? Of the of Adam. All students, whether yeah, you're yeah, on yeah. campus, yes, whether you're on campus or off campus, you belong to student affairs. There have been instances whereby our students will report their landlords to us. And we go to the extent of sending the uh, legal unit there with the security to find out what happened. There have been instances whereby we invited the landlords to our office to iron things out. Let me say this. Last week, a landlord reported uh, two students, and we invited the students along the landlord to find out what happened, they eventually found that the landlord was at fault. So we are concerned with the welfare of our students, wherever they are, whether you are in Baden or elsewhere. In as much as we get to know that you have issues, we usually take this up because students, whether on campus or off campus, they are our students and they are concerned. And that is why when you talk of, um, you know, problems that are there, if, when students are traveling, they are, they are insured. Wherever they are, they are insured. We are interested. We are interested in their welfare. And that's where it is. So it doesn't matter what, else. and I want to add this. Uh, you have private hostels that are not, uh, we have some within the campus and some outside the campus. We have regular meetings with them. They attend monthly meetings of committee of wardens. We see the, we see the uh, hostels as part and parcel of the University of Biden. And that's why I said earlier that we have a sort of control over private hostels. If you have a such control, then it's easy to know how your, stu uh, your students are, you know, doing or uh, the way they are living in, the, in, in such halls, apart from the one that are under, uh, under the school authority, authority directly. Very much. Um, very quickly, uh, to Professor Sadolo here. Is there a way also that the universities can restructure students' activities uh, to increase the level of social interaction through, for instance, I know that departments will normally have their departmental week lecture free. Faculties also will have their faculty week. The students' union, of course, have theirs. Is there a way some activities can be structured into this and counseling sessions structured into this and I just see those periods as being lecture free and students take off and go to wherever they want to go to and then come back again and they are faced with no, similar the challenges? The idea of orientation is normally at the beginning of the academic year for new students. That one is compulsory. It's at the university level in the first instance, at faculty level, then departmental level. But well, the issue of student activities is determined by the students themselves. Management of the university cannot say, okay, look, this is an association, you force yourself into it and have this program. Students through the student affairs office, they always you know, declare intentions to organize programs, activities, and then of course we support them with security staff. But be that as it may, what is important here for all of us is that many students are not aware that there are opportunities for counseling. That's it. They're not aware. Many students are also not aware that when they have challenges, apart from their course advisors, they can go to the head of the department. They're not aware. Many of them have never even been to the office of the head of the department. Okay. Oh. Many of them have, are not even aware that if they explore all possibilities in the faculty, in the department, and it fails, that they can come to dinner students uh, who right. will intervene. Uh, uh, all right, Prof, we we'll have to stop you there. And, uh, you know, you know, because the, the, the question Kessler raised is very, is, is, yeah, is very pertinent, yes, you know, because if there's no meeting point, if there's no meeting point no, you know, you, where, you, where, where people will share opinions on, on, on how to live on campus, of course, this issue of... No, uh, for uh, of Benin, you can, for you that. can imagine what I've just yes. said, that some students don't even know. They don't know how they're yeah, exactly. And they're living on, 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 on campus, so we, we can just understand that. More Gentlemen, reason. time is not our friend now. Uh, we've had re resilience, we've had the vulnerability, the lack of our ability to manage stress situations, rivalry, you know, emotional maturation, and what have you. All that, you know, culminate into what we're seeing today as uh, suicide on campus in Nigerian uh, universities. But of course, uh, we cannot exhaust all the factors, you know, uh, in, in a particular show. Perhaps we'll have another uh, round of this conversation next time. So uh, on this note, we close our discussion for today. And uh, before we go, we'd like to appreciate Professor Benson or Sadala, uh, former Dean, Students Affairs, University of Benin. Thanks for uh, being part of our, our show uh, today. Good pleasure. Uh, Dr. Law Mefo, a forensic uh, social psychologist. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. Thank you, Kiria. Yes. Uh, Professor, uh, 
Adeke Abiona, Dean of Students, uh, University of Ibada. Uh, you reached us from our Ibada Network Center. We appreciate your contribution this morning. Uh, as well as uh, Dr. Jubril Abdul Malik, consultant psychiatrist, University College Hospital. You brought uh, a total new dimension to this conversation. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we appreciate that. Well, uh, it's time for sports. Ahead of the first round of African qualifying race for the women's football tournament of next year's Olympic Games in Tokyo, Super Falcons head coach Thomas Nabi has invited 30 players to start a camping program in Abuja as from Thursday is of August. Nigeria has been drawn to face Algeria in the first round of the qualifying fixtures with both legs of the fixture to be concluded between 26th of August and 3rd September 2019. With the first leg to be played in Algeria, the Nigerian Football Federation has announced that the return leg of the fixture will take place at the Agege Stadium Lagos. All invited players are expected to arrive in Abuja on Thursday, 8th of August. In the meantime, coach Ima Amaka Pabo has extended invitations to a total of 35 players ahead of Nigeria's home and away AFCON under 23 qualifying matches against Sudan next month. The winner of the two legs between Nigeria and Sudan will qualify for the third Africa under 23 Cup of Nations scheduled for Egypt 8 to 22nd November 2019. And in tennis, Serena Williams looks solid in her first match since losing the Wimbledon final. Defeating 20 ranked Alison Martins of Belgium 6 3 6 3 on Wednesday at the WTA Toronto tournament. The 37 year old American advanced in 75 minutes at a forced US Open at Court to Nobby Vang. All right, so that does it uh, for us today on Good Morning Nigeria. I would like to thank you for tuning in. The program is back tomorrow, same time, 7 o'clock in the morning. Until then, do enjoy the rest of your day. My name is Kingsley Osadolo. And I'm Kirin. You might have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.